It's low tide and 5.30 in the morning on Slaughter Beach in Delaware Bay. A cannon net is being set up to catch a variety of shorebirds for research. So Simon's digging a little cannon hole there, ready to put the cannon in. So each of these two small nets has two cannons on it. And they're set at the right angle to pull the net out nice and tight and square. A team of British ornithologists who are experts in capturing wild shorebirds are carefully setting up the cannon net. This is one of many techniques that is used for safely capturing shorebirds. So inside the, uh, the cannon is a fuse, and this is the electrical connection to the fuse, and I'm just now connecting that up to this cable. The cable runs back to where we'll fire the net from. The crew covers the net with debris from the beach in an effort to hide it and make it blend in. Wild birds are very timid and will stay away from areas recently disturbed. A last minute check to make sure everything is set just right. Then everyone is off to their hiding places. Wires from the cannons are run back to a firing box. The firing team quietly watches from a distance of about 300 yards and patiently waits for the birds to move in front of the net. When enough birds have moved in, then it's time to fire the net. The team of biologists and volunteers run out from their hiding places to make sure the net does not force the birds into the water. The net is moved up onto the beach and each bird is carefully pulled out and put into a box. It's a busy place. Team members have to work together very quickly and safely. A screen is pulled over the net to shade the birds and to keep them as calm as possible while the team works energetically to move them off the beach. As the birds are pulled out from the net, they are placed into boxes. This seems very chaotic, but most of the members have done this many times before and know how important it is to move fast and to get the birds into a safe place. Sometimes two or three at a time are packed in until the box is full. The boxes of precious cargo are carried back to the house where they will be processed. This was a very successful catch. Over 95 birds were caught, mainly red knots, rooty turnstones, and some other birds of interest. This is a good sample of migratory birds in Delaware Bay and it will reveal excellent information on migration patterns and population data. Like a battalion of Marines, everyone works together quietly and deliberately to get the birds moved into their holding pens called sacking cloches. Uh, so we just need to get them in here so they can all settle down. And you can hear them calling in the cages. These are contact calls. Um, and this is an amazing bird. This bird is a, all just skin and bone, and it's one that we've marked before, and I suspect this has only arrived in the last couple of days. Could we all try and keep our voices down as much as possible, let the bird settle? Now, as soon as we've got everything sorted and the birds relaxed in the cages, we will go through and band and put the, the coded tags on, and uh, weigh and measure the birds uh, prior to release. So we'll set up teams of people each doing that because we now will need to get the birds away as quick as possible. One of the first steps is to carefully place a plastic flag on the upper part of the red knot's leg. In this case, a green one with AA2 on it, which means the bird was captured in Delaware Bay. Then take a sample of the belly feathers along with a single wing feather and place it in a marked plastic bag. By looking at the radioisotopes in the wing feather, scientists can tell where the bird has wintered. This process is repeated for all the red knots that were captured. So this is a coated, coated leg flag. And once this bird is released, we can then go back out into the field and uh, look for it both this year and then in subsequent years. When we see a bird that was released in previous years and future years, we can um, look at the survivorship of the population. 
A team of volunteers and biologists work together to band, measure, and weigh the catch. A metal ring or band is crimped carefully on the lower leg of the red knot for the U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service. Then the plumage is checked for color and to see if new feathers have grown in. The bird is handed to the next person and the wing is placed on a ruler and measured. It's handed off again for the next step and the head and bill are measured. Then the bird is gently shoved into a tube and placed on a scale to be weighed. All this information is meticulously written down and recorded so that it can be added to a computer database. It's extremely important not to stress the birds, so they are handled as carefully and as quietly as possible. These birds have all been weighed and measured and banded, and now taking them as they're all finished with to be released. This bird was marked several years ago when we were just starting to use the coded tags. Um, down in Argentina, therefore it's got an orange band on it. And these were the first attempts at um, using these coded tags. So we know this bird winters in Terra del Fuego. It will have been there in March. Uh, in April it will have been in Brazil, and now in May, Delaware Bay. And in a week or so's time, it will be in the high Arctic. So, ready to go.